Hello and welcome to Jasco Goods. That's how you say hello in Australia. That's a shout out to my Australian viewers. Hey guys, welcome to Jasco Goods. I got a fun one for you today, guys. This project's gonna be a little bit more challenging than some of the other projects I've done. Not because it's a lot of work, but because I'm using tools and I'm using techniques I haven't used before on this channel and some I haven't used before at all. In today's video, I'm gonna to try to recreate a popular woodworking gift that's trending right now. And it should sell really well this holiday season. Or you can make it as a gift for your friends and family. Or you can make it for your number one supporter. Make it for yourself, I'm not judging you. And because this is the first time I'm making one of these, I don't have a build plan. I'm going off of pictures and I'm pretty much making it up as I go. So I'm probably gonna make a lot of mistakes and cry a little along the way. But that's what makes these projects fun and interesting, just working out the issues together. And like I said, I'm also gonna use some new tools and some new accessories that I haven't used before on this channel and some I haven't used before at all. So you'll get to see me fumble around like an idiot a little bit. And you can laugh if you want, I can't see you, but I know you're laughing. Now that you know what you're in for, Let's get to building. Okay, so these things right here, they're called either the couch cup holder or a couch caddy are gaining popularity. I even seen one at Walmart. Look, even Cheetos is trying to get a piece of the action. So basically, it's just something you put on your couch and you put some snacks in it. Um, you could put, look at this one's gone for $74.99. You put, you want to put your cup in it and it just kind of sits on your couch. So, and I'm going to kind of mix two of together because another popular thing is this one right here where you got the books where you combine the books and the couch caddy. This one's in 20 carts right now and it's gone for $64 and look how simple that looks. You could do something super simple like that. The one I'm going to do is going to be a little bit bigger like this one, except it's going to be different. It's going to have a book holder and all that. I'll show you. Let's get to building. A lot of times when I make something from scratch like this or just from a picture, I'll get a piece of paper and I start doing little sketches and figure out my measurements. Okay, so the first part I'm building is the cup holder. I'm using a one by six. The cup holder holes are going to be three and a quarter inches across. Then I'm going to have three quarters of an inch on each side of the holes and then three quarters of an inch between the two holes. I'm using this scrap piece of wood to mark off three quarter inch borders on two sides of where I'm going to drill the hole. I'm using a hole punch just to give myself a little indentation to where I could put the hole saw so it doesn't move around on me. I got this hole saw on Amazon for like $12.99. It had a 4.7 rating. The one at my local big box store was almost double the price and they wouldn't even barter with me for some homemade wine I made, even though I told them I stomped it out with my own feet. But as you can see, this one worked great, so I was kind of happy they turned me down. So after I got the first hole drilled, I laid out the rest of this cup holder section. If you didn't notice, on the right hand side there, I kind of went over my layout line with my cup hole, but that's okay because I didn't cut it to the final dimension yet, so I can still get my three quarters on that side. You notice how I measured wrong here? See how close I am to the other hole? I'm supposed to have three quarters in between there. Luckily, I noticed it before I started drilling. But don't worry, I drill a lot more holes wrong in the future. In the future of the video, that is. I'm not psychic. I'm not saying I'm psychic or anything. I forgot to clamp the board. Did you see it moving on me? The first hole drilled like a dream. The second one, I forgot to clamp the board. Now watch what happens next. My bit fell out. Then I couldn't figure out why I couldn't drill through this board. I don't know what was stopping this from going all the way through. Then I removed the board and looked and lo and behold, there was a screw for my workbench right where the, my drill tip was going in. What are the chances of that? So I just flipped my board over and finished it off from the other side. Then I trimmed it up to its final dimensions on my broke man's table saw. Now that I got the cup holder section to its final dimensions, I could use those dimensions to cut the rest of the box out of one by four. Here's a diagram I put together to help visualize it. You can see now where the cup holder is gonna go in relation to the rest of the box. I need to cut four vertical boards at eight and three quarters inches. If you don't see the fourth vertical board, it's because it's under the cup holder as support. And two horizontal boards at 14 and a half inches. Now I know I'm dressed like I gave up on life, but I haven't, I'm just married. And if anybody's keeping track for budget reasons, I was able to cut the whole box out of one one by four, eight footer. And then for the bottom, I'm gonna use a piece of quarter inch plywood. Oops, that was a close one. Now that all my pieces are cut, I'm gonna use the Turd Polisher 2000 and clean them up a little bit before I put them all together. Okay, so now I'm just laying it out all out upside down just to check my spacing on everything. Make sure my bowl fits and everything looks pretty good. I think I'm gonna make this a little wider. I can't wait to put a bowl of Fruity Pebbles in this thing. So the one board that goes under my cup holder as support, I gotta cut that down with the tables on my table saw. I don't have an easy gripper, I got the welfare gripper. I made this myself. You ever left your piece of wood like that thinking that you were away from the blade and you turned it on and 
that hits it. Yeah, I haven't either. So the dimension of this board is just three quarters of an inch minus off the one by four. It might be smart just to take a little bit off at a time until you get it right. Call woodworkers monthly, somebody. Okay, originally I planned on making a groove in the bottom of this so that this is recessed. But I didn't think about it till just now. If, if I cut a groove all the way through, I'm gonna have a gap on the end sticking out. You're just gonna see a hole there. So what I think I'm gonna do instead is I'm just gonna cut it close, put it on top, and then use a flush trim bit and go all the way around. Now I wanna drill handles into the two end boards, the eight and three quarter inch boards. Now I just measured my fat hands and they were about four inches across by inch and a half, maybe inch and a quarter. Then I drilled two holes with an inch and a quarter Forzner bit, and I left my bench wheels unlocked to make it a little bit more challenging. Then I drew a line with a ruler from the edge of one hole to the other and connected them with my uh, jigsaw. And bam, perfect handle. Then I took some double-sided tape and a one-inch dowel. I wrapped some sandpaper around it, some 150 grit, and I made a perfect sandy block for smoothing out inside my handles. Or if you got some stubborn hemorrhoids you're trying to get rid of, here you go. Then before I put it all together, I wanted to use my round over bit and round over the handles on both sides, the inside and the out. And while I was rounding stuff over, I rounded over the uh, inside and the outside of the cup holders too, which I shouldn't have rounded over the inside. It was a mistake. I'll, I'll show you why later. Then I cleaned it all up a little bit with some sandpaper. I like to do a little bit of sanding along the way, uh, just so I'm not waiting to the end and I have to do it all and then it's hard to get to. Okay, so there you got it. My superhero bathroom is now complete. He, there's Superman taking a super dump while Captain America apparently has some kind of thing going on watching. Okay, what I was really showing you this for was my, my wife wants it so she could put a coffee cup in it. I either have to notch this, which is what I think I'm gonna do, so the coffee cup can be in there deeper, keep it from tipping over so easily, and uh, this will kind of help hold it in. So I'm gonna notch, put a notch in here and then I'm going to put something under there to support the coffee cup when you set it in there. What do you guys think? So I just used my bandsaw to cut a groove into the cup holder. This has got to be the world's slowest, most underpowered bandsaw. I got it like 10 years ago, and it was only a, like $99. And uh, it is just very, very underpowered. If I push too hard, even with this three-quarter inch material, it'll just stop. On top of that, the blade used to fall off all the time. It's so hard to get it dialed in. But it did the job, so can't complain too much, I guess. So now I want to attach a little square underneath the coffee cup one because I don't want the coffee cup to go down all the way to the bottom like the other cup holder is going to do. The other cup holder is going to be for regular cups. This side that I'm sanding is going to be for coffee cups. So I need to put something under there. But if I just glue a piece of wood under there, it's still going to keep the coffee up too high. I want the coffee cup to sit deep enough to where it doesn't tip over very easily. So I want to take that piece of three quarter inch wood that I put under there and I want to put a recess in it the same size as my cup holder. Yeah, that just happened. So I'm making a template out of this particle board that I could use with a template bit in my router to make a recess groove into a, another piece of wood. And before you start thinking, wow, this guy's really coming along as a woodworker. This three quarter inch was too thick, so I have to cut a new piece out of some half inch plywood. And that did the trick. Is it just me or is it funny to watch this in fast motion? Like a glove. What movie is that from? So I had to cut it right up to the edge of the circle on my miter saw. And now I'm just cutting off a little bit of the edge with, the, uh, with this little pool saw I got. Then I trimmed it up the rest of the way on my band saw. What do you guys think? Looks good to me. The only thing is, remember I told you how I rounded under the underside of the cup holder? Well, now you see there's a little groove in there because I rounded it over and it's not really flush. I'm just, I'm just going to tell my wife it's a juice groove, like what they put on cutting boards. She won't know. Okay, so now it's time to assemble everything. I'm going to use dowels for some of it, but like the main structure, but the some of the inner structures, I'm just going to use glue. I have this dowel jig that I usually use, and, and a lot of people wrote me last time and said I was using it wrong because I was I was explaining how when you put... When you put stuff on here, it doesn't, it, it doesn't, it's hard to hold it straight and it doesn't clamp very well. And a lot of people pointed out that I was holding it upside down, meaning I should have been holding it this way. And this is how you center it. 
onto your piece of wood. They're, they're only partially right because that is how you center it sometimes and that's only if you're gonna use the 3 8 which I did use last time. That doesn't work if you're using any other size dowel. But another problem was the pieces I were using were one by three. So if I try to put this on the top of a one by three, I, I can't do it. I can't center it in the one by three. So I did it this way and I just put it as, I marked the wood and then I put it close to center. So yeah, you would, you could normally do it this way and center it into the wood. Whoa. You could normally do it this way and find the center of the wood, but when you're doing something as thin as a one by three, uh, that, that self that doesn't work because you can't center it. Also, when you get out to the edge of your piece, like I was doing, and you have a one by three, it, you know, the one by three is only gonna go to here. So if, you're, if you come out here and you try to center it, it's not gonna work there either. So it works, they're right if you're gonna center it as long as you keep it at the top. So anybody who said I was using this wrong, there's your answer. I wasn't. So this time I'm not using this one because I complained about it so much on my last video that somebody from, I'm not making the name of this company up, Banggood, I don't know if you guys have heard of them, I've seen them a little bit around YouTube. Since they contacted me, they sent me a dowel jig. And the name of the dowel jig is Enjoy Wood. I don't know who's making up the names for these people. I don't know if uh, they have somebody that they hired that's messing with them from America, and they're like, hey, how about Banggood? This thing, I mean, it seems pretty awesome. I haven't used it yet. The only problem I see with their stuff is, a lot of their stuff only comes in metric. Not all of it, there is some stuff on the website where you can decide between metric and imperial, but a great percentage of it only comes in metric. I told the person that emailed me that Americans use imperial measurements, and they said, oh yeah, everything comes with the option, but, but anyways, this thing is pretty heavy duty. I mean, it's pretty heavy, but you can see it has like five ports. You can switch all those out. It has different sizes. There, another problem is there was no instructions. You thought I couldn't figure this easy one out? There's no instructions for this. And look at all these pieces it comes with. It comes with a side guide. It came with drill bits. So I'll, I'm gonna try this out. And, and uh, I told him I'd give it an honest review and, and uh, I'll let you guys know how it does. I'm, I feel like I'm just doing something so simple that, I don't know, maybe this is overkill, but uh, let's give it a try. You guys let me know what you think. It was actually much easier to assemble than I thought it was gonna be, uh, especially since I was watching a video while I was doing it. That really helped. Okay, so the way I'm doing it is, I'm going in one, whatever that is, centimeter, millimeter? No, it's probably a centimeter one centimeter, and then I put this piece in this way, I clamped it down, and I drilled my two holes. One thing I was worried about is the drills, and all this is in, like I said, it's in metric, so I'm using the eight millimeter, and I was like, well, wait a minute, what about my dowels? Will those match up? Well, eight millimeter worked with my quarter inch dowels. It works pretty good. I don't know about the other ones, I'll, I'll check them out, but look. So this is the 10 millimeter, and that seems to work pretty good with the 3 8 There's a bit of play in there. I mean, just a tiny bit. But if you do the 3 8 on here, there's also a little play. So, yeah. So, it looks like it, they match up with the dowels. I was worried about that. And then here's the smallest one. So, this is the quarter inch. Oh, that's really tight. It doesn't seem to fit in the... What is this? What is this? I think this is 6 millimeter. I'm not positive. Don't quote me on that. But yeah, the quarter inch doesn't fit in the six millimeter. I don't know if they even sell pin, uh, dowel pins here that are in metric. The 5 16 works. That fits pretty good. Okay, so what I did was I stuck this in this way on the table, using the table as like sort of a guide, clamped it down, drilled my, drilled my two holes. So now to put this in this side, I need to take this off and move it to drill into the end grain. So that's kind of a pain in the butt. This is a pretty awesome uh, jig other than that. Like to do, to go back and forth, you have to use these at the, an Allen key and take out these Allen screws. That's kind of a pain in the butt. When I get this all figured out, I'll do a whole video on this maybe. If you guys want one, let me know. And cause this thing does all kinds of stuff other than just douse. You can also do the cam locks with this thing. It has this hole right here and it actually came with a Forsner bit for that. So now I'm gonna switch this to the end. Um, hear that squeak? Mother. Mother! That's what I was gonna, I was singing. I wasn't gonna say nothing. So see, you have to do this to switch it out every time. 
and that can be a pain in the butt. Okay, so for this one, how do I wanna do this? If this is gonna be, I'm gonna try to flip this jig. Okay, don't make fun of me. This is how I'm trying to figure out the depth. These stop collars they give you are actually pretty beefy. All right, the moment of truth. Oh, look at how good that is. I'm kidding. I had it upside down. Okay, so obviously I didn't drill this far enough, so my method was did not work. Let me just... All right, the moment of truth. That's actually pretty good. Now this, you can see this piece of wood is, is wider than this one, but the one edge that I had on the bottom lined up perfectly, and so did the this. That's actually pretty good. So let's try it on this, and hopefully I don't mess it up and have to rebuild it. Okay, so I'm marking all the inside of my pieces just to be sure that I don't mix them around when I start doweling them. I keep forgetting you're gonna see the inside of these pieces when they're put together, and look what I just did. So this dowel jig actually worked pretty awesome. All the pieces lined up pretty good. It was awesome that I could clamp it. It seemed to be built very well and precise, but it could not stop user error. Let me show you what I did. I was like, yeah, it's going pretty good. Got a little cocky, I got my holes all drilled, and then bam, I forgot to adjust my stop collar when I switched to this side. I just drilled through my sideboard. So now I either have to do all exposed dowels or just fill this one hole that I drilled through. And I drilled through part of the plastic on this thing. Oh, you idiot! If you guys start unsubscribing, I don't blame you. Where do you see this? Remember the, hill, the hole I drilled all the way through? I had my board turned the wrong way and I started to drill the wrong side. You idiot! I'm going to put on my Spider-Man underoos and watch Goonies. All right, the way I'm gonna fix my hole situation is this. I got these plug cutters. And I'm gonna use them to cut a plug out of the same wood that I'm using to build this out of. I've never done it before, so cross your fingers. The first problem is I don't have a plug cutter to cut a plug the same size as the hole I made. So I'm gonna put the plug in the end of my screw gun and sand it down a little bit, see if that works. And quote, bam, somebody called Woodworkers and Twerkers Monthly because I'm going in the magazine. Then I just put a little bit of glue, gave it a few taps with my mallet, then cut it flush with my flush cut saw. Then finally, I just rubbed it on the Turd Polisher 2000 and quote, bam, good as new. I made my wife some stained color samples so she can pick what color she wanted this thing. Uh, I'll reveal that a little bit later, but let me know in the comments what color you think she picked and what color you would have picked. What color do you like out of these? So I did a little dry fitting with just clamps just to make sure everything was going to fit and everything looked really good and I was ready for the glue up. The glue up went really well. I laid it out on my workbench and then I just put it together from one side to the other and then I used some corner clamps to hold it all square. I did the cup holder section separately and then used some pin nails to hold it together. I wanted to personalize this couch caddy for my wife. So while the glue was drying, I took the bottom panel and I put it in my X-Tool S1. To tie in the book theme, I wanted to laser engrave her favorite book quote into the bottom of it. Then I cut her name out of a sheet of plywood to attach to the side of it. I have an idea for a two-toned effect that I think you guys are going to love. I think my wife loves this X tool more than I do. We're both really excited about all the decorations we're going to be able to do this year for fall and all the holidays that are coming up, like Thanksgiving, Halloween, uh, Christmas. If you guys want me to do some of that on this channel, let me know. If you want me to make a separate channel for the laser engraving stuff, uh, let me know that too. Let me know in the comments. And if you guys want to get yourselves one of these X-Tool laser engravers, I put an affiliate link down in the description. Okay, now that the glue is dry on my couch caddy, I'm going to hit it up with my router with a roundover bit just to, to smooth out all the corners and the edges. Since it's going to be sitting on the couch and possibly the bed, I don't want it to be snagging up the sheets and stuff. My toenails do that enough. Now just a final sanding with my orbital sander, not on my toenails, but on this project. I'm really excited to see how this turns out with the two-tone ID I got going on here. And I really hope my wife likes it too. Okay, now it's time for stain. Here's the color my wife picked, Western Oak. It was the brownish color on the very left. Okay, now that you know the stain color she picked, I can tell you what she said. I showed her those stains and I said, which one do you like? And she said, I like the brown stains like in your underwear. That's exactly what she said. Do you, can you believe I take that abuse? I mean, it is true. But I prefer to call it tiger stripes. It sounds more manly. So this is the bottom panel. 
It's about an eighth inch of plywood. I try to personalize it by engraving my wife's favorite book quote into the bottom, but I pulled a Jasco. So this is supposed to go underneath of it like this, but I burned this upside down. I feel like this is the top, this is the bottom, or the front, back. This should go the other way. I put, I don't know if you can see the, the marks I made. I made marks into the corners so that I can refer, reference, reference where I wanted it to be in the, in the S1. But I still, and it, it came out really good, but I just, I did it upside down. So I'm going to cut a new piece and try it again. So the last time I cut this back piece, I just grabbed my saw like a baboon and slung it across the plywood. And you could see the edges there, how chipped up it was. This time I put a piece of tape to see if I can do a cleaner edge. What a difference. This is the piece I cut without the tape and then the piece I cut with the tape. What a difference. Okay, so I made a new bottom, it worked out great. Now I'm just gonna glue it and pin nail it on. I feel like I'm decorating a cake right here. Oh great, now I want cake. Okay, so as you can see, I left the plywood a little bit long all the way around it. So I can come back with my router with a flush trim bit. And that way I don't have to try to cut the plywood perfectly the same size as the box. And then if you notice here, I'm using a speed square so I don't go off course with my nails. Then I just put down these bench cookies so the couch caddy doesn't slide all over the place while I'm routering, routing, while I'm, you know, when I'm flush trimming it. For me, this was much easier than trying to cut it on the table saw and get it perfect. But uh, I had some snags. Let me show you. You could probably see it already, what's going on. I don't know if it's because I use a cheap Ryobi bit, but it was brand new. But you see how it left the fibers all around this thing? I'm going to try to use a plastic putty knife and... Uh, just bring them up and then hit it up with some sandpaper. See if I can knock them off. I'll let you know. This kit was brand new. I got it Black Friday. But if you look, this is the first time I used this bit. Something fell off. I don't know what you call that part of the bearing, but you see how all the bearings are exposed? I don't think it's supposed to be like that. And it's it's not really a flush cut. It's there's a lip on it. It didn't really get it too flush. I, mean, I know it, it, it can't get it that close, but I don't know. Seems like there's a lot left over. So I got most of the strays off. I think it'll be all right. When I uh, clear coat this and sand it, I think it'll smooth it out. So I'm, I'm not too worried about it. Do you notice the plug I filled earlier? How do you think it came out? Okay, before I glue my wife's name onto the side of it, I'm gonna put down some wax paper or some parchment paper, and then I'm gonna do my first coat of clear coat. That way I can give it a good sanding before the letters are on top of it and I can't really get in between them too well. I don't wanna contaminate my whole can of clear coat, so normally I don't stain right out of the can. I take some out with this syringe and I put it into a separate container. For some reason, squeezing this out into this container always reminds me of Taco Bell. I don't know why. Okay, you probably don't wanna see me clear coat this whole thing, so here's just proof that I did it. Okay, now here's me gluing the letters on. First, I'm gonna pretend like I know how to read the tape measure. I just used a little CA glue. I'll leave a link in the description. Then I spray it on a little activator to make it dry instantly, and that's another reason I wanted a clear coat first. Sometimes this will mess up your stain. I decided to put on some rubber gloves because last time I used the CA glue, I got it underneath my fingernail, and it was freaking me out. And there you go, guys. What do you think? You think she'll love it? You think this makes up for a Dutch oven? Just saying hypothetically. Okay guys, there you go. Another project for the book. What do you guys think of it? You can keep a coffee in there. You got yourself a cold water. Got my handles on the side. Got my snacks ready. Come on, Batman, quit drinking. Get over your parents. You know I gotta have my favorite snack. Wash it down with a little bit of this. Got me a bowl of croutons to crunch on. And then my favorite books. I'm always reading some kind of building books. Keeping myself sharp, you know, as a tradesman. Well, let me know what you guys think. Would you guys build something like this? Did you like this build? Let me know what you think in the comments. You guys usually do. You guys leave the best comments. I love all my comments. I love going through them. Sometimes it takes me a little while, uh, you know, a few days later. But I try to go through every comment and respond to it. Because I love that you guys are so positive in the comments. And I appreciate it. Thank you, guys. And uh, hopefully you like this build. And if you got any suggestions of other things you want me to build, let me know. Now get to building.